This is our God. We say we love you today, Jesus. We say we've come for you. Would you come and meet us, oh God? Would you come and lavish your love upon us? We thank you for who you are. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Worship team, thank you so much. You may take your seats in the room and at home if you were standing as well. It's so good to see so many of you in the room, but also to have some of you uh, joining us at home. Hopefully, if you've been tracking with us over the last uh, couple of weeks, then you're probably aware that we've been in this series called Beauty for Ashes, and it's inspired by the words from Isaiah 61. Isaiah was this prophet who was sent by God to the Israelites in Jerusalem to tell them about a coming servant king like we just spoke about there and sang about, who would be anointed by the Spirit of God, meaning he would be filled and empowered by the Spirit to restore and renew a people who were in brokenness, bondage and blindness. Then more than 700 years later, the promised Messiah, which also means anointed one, came in the person of Jesus. And in Luke 4, 14 to 21, we see Jesus speaking of himself in the same way that Isaiah spoke of him uh, in a synagogue in Nazareth where he says, today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. And last week, uh, Pastor Esther helped us to turn our focus to the fact that this Messiah, this anointed one, would exchange mourning for comfort and joy and our ashes for beauty. And so as we uh, continue today, we'll be looking at what else would come through him. So if you have your Bibles and devices, uh, we're going to turn together to Isaiah 61 one to three, which is also going to come up on the screen behind me and at home. And it says, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the, de the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. Well, as mentioned earlier, and as you can see, an incredible picture is being painted of a promise of restoration to come through this anointed one. And today, I would love for us to focus specifically on the words from Isaiah 61, 1, which say, He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. Already, as we probably begin to think of this idea of the brokenhearted, I don't know about you, but for me, it sounds very brutal. I looked up this idea of heartbreak on Google, because Google seems to have all the answers. Uh, and just on a scientific and medical level, heartbreak of your physical heart is actually a thing. It's called heartbreak syndrome, uh, and it's a temporary condition where a part of your physical heart stops functioning and it's often brought on by really stressful situations or extreme emotional and physical stresses. Now as interesting as heartbreak syndrome might be, that's not really uh, what we're going to be focusing on today and in fact it's quite a rare uh, condition. See when we come to the Bible, the word heart is mentioned over 500 times in the New International Version of the Bible. You might be familiar with verses like Mark 12, 30, love the Lord your God with all your heart. And also Romans 10, 9, if you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you will be saved. And then Proverbs 4, 23, above all else, guard your heart. For out of it uh, flows the issues or, uh, of life, or everything you do flows from it. You see, the Hebrew word 
uh, for heart used in that last passage I mentioned and often in other scriptures is levav. It's spelled a little bit different to how it's said, levav. And it means the innermost part of man. It's the will, the mind, the emotions and understanding. So when someone says, I'm heartbroken, what they're probably trying to say is, at the core and depth of who I am, in my being, in my thinking and in my feeling, I am heartbroken, I'm broken, I don't feel whole. Which is why similarly in Isaiah 61, like we just read, the word used for the brokenhearted describes those who are broken or crushed or shattered. Heartbreak can be painful. In fact, some research suggests that in really emotional heartbreak, where it's so intense, it can mimic uh, things in the brain and hormonal activity in a similar way to physical pain. So maybe if you've been heartbroken, that's why sometimes it even feels like it's a physical manifestation. Heartbreak can feel like disorder and chaos. Your emotions feel scattered. You feel like you're not thinking straight. Your actions are so sporadic and all over the place. Heartbreak can be a state of depression. You don't feel like seeing anyone. You don't feel like doing anything. You feel that sense of despair or shame or weariness. Or heartbreak can be like feeling nothing at all. You feel numb. This is by no means an all-encompassing description of what heartbreak can be like. The experience is personal to each of us. But what I do want to validate today is that from the youngest to the oldest, we can all experience heartbreak. And that's because part of being made in God's image is that we were made to think and to feel, to love and to care. And when you get your heart entangled in those things, there is a risk that your heart can be broken. Although I won't be going into the details of my story today, one of the most significant ways that I have been heartbroken is in my relationship with my biological father. And I loved what Pastor Martin brought this morning about bringing a message of hope to broken families. You see, from childhood and into adulthood, I carried this pain of heartbreak because my father was absent, absent by choice, it seemed to me. Although I was still blessed to have my mom, and later on I was blessed by a wonderful and caring stepfather, I still carried pains of feeling rejected, and abandoned by my biological father, I questioned my identity and where I, it is that I belonged. I often wondered what if and why, if things would have been different. I carried resentment and insecurity and even a skeptical view of relationships. And I'll speak a little bit later on in this message on how God helped me uh, to walk through a journey of healing, but I share this to acknowledge that for many of us, or maybe for all of us, we all have our own stories of heartbreak, past and present, healed or maybe still even hidden from you. Heartbreak may have been formed or realized in the last 15 months as we've been uh, in a pandemic, Highly stressful and emotional and difficult circumstances may have pushed you to uncomfortable and plain, painful places. Maybe you've lost a loved one. Maybe you've lost your job. You've lost a sense of purpose. There's relational breakdown. You feel distant from God. And the list goes on and on. And in the midst of this, our friends and our family and experts, all of them may have something to say that might or might not be helpful about our heartbreak, but so does Jesus. God also has something to say. And so today, if you're feeling heartbroken, Jesus would say to you, I have been sent to bind up the brokenhearted. I have been sent for you. So my first point for today is hold on to hope. You see, Isaiah prophesied these words in Isaiah 61 at a time when the Israelites were facing their own heartbreak and devastation. 
Sin had separated them from God. They had witnessed and been victims of injustice. They'd been uprooted from their homes and their lives and into captivity by various nations like Babylon. In fact, it was so bad that it's recorded in Isaiah 40 that the people complained against God. They said that since our enemies seem to be prospering more than we are, then God has abandoned us. And if we're not careful, for us too, heartbreak has a way of making us a hopeless people who carry a spirit of despair. Heartbreak can shake our faith and our trust in anything and anyone. And you can find yourself saying, this pain will never go, deliverance will never come, and God doesn't care. And yet it was this same God who the Israelites felt had abandoned them that had sent prophets like Isaiah to speak a message of hope, a promise of healing in the place of heartbreak that would come through this Messiah. They didn't know the exact details of who and where and when and how, but they knew that if God was speaking, then there was still hope because God is a promise keeper. Just Church, I want to remind you today that our hope is not in just time healing all wounds or the pandemic passing and we suddenly just forget about all the issues that we've carried for the last 15 months. Our hope is in our God. Our hope is in the fact that God is not a liar. He's a promise keeper. He is faithful and he is true. He is true to his word. He keeps his promises to a thousand generations and this is the reason for our hope. And true to his word, God did send Jesus into the world. Something that the Israelites thought they, something that the Israelites didn't actually get to see, yet we live in the reality that a promised Messiah actually came into this world. And Jesus didn't just come to declare these words about himself and then just do a disappearing act. Jesus came and he went on the cross for you and for me. On that cross, he too was broken to redeem and to restore us. So then how much more can we have hope that this God will also heal our hearts? So in the midst of your heartbreak today, I want to encourage you wherever you're at to hold on to hope. Secondly, admit that you're broken hearted. You see, if there's hope for a healer, then there's freedom for us to admit that we need healing. Sometimes we consciously or unconsciously cover or ignore our heartbreak by saying things like, I'm sure other people have it worse than me. Maybe I'm just too sensitive. I just need to have faith. And whilst all these things might be true, they never actually make room for you to validate your emotions and your experience. And therefore, they never actually make room for you to receive healing. Last week, Pastor Esther shared about how sometimes we can be too afraid to be vulnerable uh, because we're afraid that whatever might come out, firstly, we won't be expecting it, but also it will be more than we feel that we can manage. And therefore, we'll feel out of control. But I want to encourage us to today to say that when you admit your difficulties before Jesus, you no longer have to fear losing control. Instead, it becomes about handing over control to him. Church, Jesus is big enough to handle your heartbreak. He won't be overwhelmed. He'll know exactly what to do. In Luke 5, 35, 31, Jesus said, it's not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. See, Jesus is not shocked by your heartbreak. He didn't come into this world expecting a perfect and put together people. He came for the broken hearted. It's what he specializes in. The name of God is Jehovah Rapha, our healer. He is the greatest doctor of all time. So today, church, admit to him that you're broken hearted so that he can help you. Thirdly, accept that healing is a process. Has anyone ever broken or injured a part of their body? You could just show your hands. Actually, not as many as, oh no, they're coming, the hands. <laughs> 
But you probably know that aside from the pain that you experience, usually there is a process of recovery that you need to go on. Even if it's something as small as a scratch on your body, your, uh, on, your, on your body, yeah, your body's biological processes will get to work to prepare it, repair it. So when we come to considering something more major like heartbreak, the process of recovery might be even greater. Now, this is not to say that Jesus cannot just come in one moment and completely heal. We know that he can. If you read through the Gospels, you see that he certainly does. And I believe that even as we open up our hearts today to him, he can exchange our heartbreak for healing in a moment. And so let's remain open to that. And yet all at the same time, for others, Jesus will often take us on a process. Because it's in the process that he strengthens us, that he matures us, that he teaches us something about himself. I know many of you are hearing this and you don't like the process, you just want the healing. But actually, the process is also worth it. For me, uh, in the case of my heartbreak involving my biological father, God took me on my own process. A process of realizing and admitting to myself and to God about the true impact of his absence. I prayed and I journaled and eventually I started speaking to others about how I felt. God taught me about forgiveness and letting go. God taught me about how he is the good and perfect father who never fails, the one in whom I can rely on. God taught me, uh, as I went into his word, about my identity in Christ. And he helped me to renew my perspectives. Even sharing today, I consider a part of the healing journey that God is taking me on. And after 23 years with uh, away from my biological father, him and I actually began uh, a process of reconciling and rebuilding our relationship and continue to until this day. Something I had settled in my heart would probably never happen. But by what I believe is the grace of God, that's where we are today. It's not been a straightforward process. It's, de it's demanded patience and learning and holding on to hope. Sometimes it's been tearful and confusing, and yet it's been worth it because what has remained consistent in the process is God. You see, the healing process may be different for all of us today, but maybe we just need to open up our hearts and say, God, Heal my brokenness, even if it's a process. Can I invite the band to come up, please? My fourth and final point for today is stay close to the healer. The last 15 months have probably been some, brought some of the biggest challenges that we've had. Uh, one to include the distance that's had to be created between medical professionals and those needing medical attention, all in an effort to keep us safe and keep things efficient. I remember during the winter time, I was suffering from uh, toothache. Uh, and the only way that I could reach my dentist because my surgery was closed was by calling them. And when I called them, all that they advised me to do was take some painkillers and hold on in hope that the pain would subside. But it actually got so bad that at one point, I remember uh, it was in the morning and I was just keeled over, curled over on the floor, uh, on the phone to 111 and telling them uh, that my pain was unbearable. And they organized for me to have an emergency appointment where the dentist was able to do the surgery and I also got to have uh, additional procedures afterwards. What I really needed for healing to happen was not the painkillers, not the step-by-step -step process of how I can help myself. I needed proximity to the healer. They were the only ones who could really do anything about my pain. And likewise, for us to begin and to continue a journey of healing, we'll need to stay close to Jesus. You see, there's no restrictions with him. There's nowhere that we can go that his presence is not there. In fact, Psalm 34 verse 18 says, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted 
and saves those who are crushed in spirit. And so even if today or over the last 15 months you felt distant from God, God has not been distant from you. So now cooperate with Him. Do the work of staying close to Him, staying close to Him in hope, in prayer, through His Word, and keep an open heart to the process that He might want to take you on. I wonder if I can invite us to stand together. Many of us today can identify with heartbreak. Either we're still carrying heartbreak from the past that we haven't healed from or heartbreak that has come on recently. But I believe that today Jesus wants to heal and bind the brokenhearted. He came for you. And so wherever you are, I just want to invite you that if this is for you, maybe you want to open up your heart. Even if you believe maybe there's nothing for you, sometimes as God searches our hearts, He reveals things that we didn't even know. So as a posture of an open heart, maybe you want to open your hands. And I'm going to pray for us. Jesus, would you come? We invite you into the broken spaces. We invite you into the hidden places, into the pain that we carry. Lord, we thank you that you came. We thank you that because you came, Lord, we can have hope today that you will heal us. And so we pray, would you come into every part that is in pain and bring healing? Lord, would you exchange our heartbreak for healing today? that we may walk free and that way we may call you Jehovah Rapha. In Jesus' name.